While true to schoolboy tradition, St. Benedict's College head coach Dexter Cyrus may be contemplating extra laps for his charges come next to training day. This after their domination over Princess Town secondary, but it only yielded them one point in the SSFL South Zone as competition continued today. Even with the heroics of the Princess Town goalkeeper Kevin John, Benedict's could have been comfortable winners. But for wasteful finishing, Jassy Marik was at the game at the Manny Ram John Stadium and brought back these highlights. As one spectator pointed out, in days gone by, these two teams would have drawn a decent crowd. No such luck today as they kicked off in deafening silence. Still though, one team seemed to have greater motivation than the next, and that was clearly St. Benedict's. They almost surrendered an embarrassing goal when this looped cross dropped just in front of the crossbar, but hit the post and came back out. And with that, Benedict's noticeably up their play, however, met with an impressive Kevin John in the P-Town goal. Kyle Celestin was the architect here, crossing to Jamil Botswain, who missed a sitter. Later, this purposeful corner pocket header was stylishly plucked down by John, Benedict's frustrations growing. Moments later, they stroked it nicely into the spaces before Yafe Roger let fly, a stiff left hand sending that shot over bar. It seemed the only way Benedicts would get the goal would be with John out of the way. So when he failed to recover from a nasty collision, Celestin tapped into an empty net, though something seemed missed. And just before the half, they could have and should have scored again had but Swain not hit the bar from point blank. In the second half, Benedict's again started the more purposeful team. However, they were stunned when P-Town found the equalizer through Stefan Steele. Try as they did, Benedict's were slowly realizing the magnitude of their wastefulness with every passing chance. And by the final whistle, there was no way back. A share of the points for the one-all draw. Benedict's walk with running shoes to the next training session. Laps are definitely in order. I am Jassy Marik reporting for CNC3 Sports. And let's look at the other scores from the matches played today. Staying in the South Zone, it was Presentation College of San Fernando defeating Shiva Boys. That game was played in Pinal 1-0 the final there. And there's confirmation of the Benedict's Princess Town game. And in a game which ended just a few minutes ago, Naparima College whipped Maruga 5-0. Moving now to the North Zone, St. Anthony's College, the defending champions. They were 1-0 winners over East Mukarapo. St. Mary's College defeated Trinity College 1-0. That game played at Mocha, while QRC were 3-1 winners over Dago Martin North Secondary. And in the East Zone, San Juan North lost to St. Augustine Secondary 1-2. The El Dorado East and Toco game did not play. That's rescheduled for sometime in October. And Trinity East and Arima North played to a two-all draw. You are moving to cricket now. West Indies swing into T20 Super 8's action tomorrow against defending champions England. The Caribbean side yet to get in a full game after rain affected their two preliminary matches against Australia and Ireland. Captain Darren Sammy hinted today at a bit of a dilemma in choosing his bowling options. Definitely look to, to bowl spin against them. But, um, you know, we have um, quality bowlers, the uh, same bowlers at the front in, in Fidel and, and, and Ron Paul. You know, um, we have Badri, who is another spinner in the, in the lineup. Um, so every year, all of them would be considered. And um, hopefully we could um, bowl really well against England and, 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 and have a good game. We have a lot left in the, in the tank. We've not played a complete game, but um, you know, it brings memories back of, of the last World Cup um, played in the Caribbean. So hopefully we could um, gather momentum from here, start off with a win tomorrow and, and, and take it from there. Well, the West Indies women's cricket team opened their T20 World Cup in style this morning, early this morning, with an emphatic win over New Zealand in Gal, Sri Lanka. The regional ladies won the toss and decided 
that they would be best if they bowled the first at the Kiwis, who had a decent start, but once the Windies made the first breakthrough, New Zealand continued to lose crucial wickets at regular intervals. And from then on, New Zealand got a top score of 32 from opener and captain Susie Bates, but their final total of 117 for 9 in their 20 was a somewhat short of what they were expected to achieve. The West Indies women were in early trouble as both Tremaine Smart and Chanel Daly departed without scoring to leave the regional team on 5 for 2 in the second over. But Deandra Dotton then joined Stephanie Taylor. That pair put on an 82-run partnership before Taylor departed on 32. Captain Marissa Aguilera and Dotton, though, ensured that the Windies reached 118 for 3 from 18 overs. Dotton not out on 58 when the seven-wicket win was completed. In the day's other match, South Africa defeated Sri Lanka by six wickets. Sri Lanka 79 all-out batting first. South Africa no problems, replying with 80 for four.